Hello, I want to share with you the first of our two visual representations for forces. Um, this one is I'm going to call an interaction diagram, or uh, sometimes you might hear me refer to it as a system schema, but I prefer the term interaction diagram uh, because this is all about showing the interactions, which we know forces are interactions between things, and we are looking at the interactions between all of the objects in some story. And the way that we begin is by thinking about like a moment in time. When we make an interaction diagram, it's for an instant in time. Like if you're watching the video of the bowling ball in the hallway, imagine you pause the video and that paused moment we're making an interaction diagram for that moment. And if we unpause and then pause later, then our interaction diagram could be a little bit different. And in fact, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna think about the bowling ball first when it's at rest on the floor before I start hitting it. And then I'm gonna make another interaction diagram for while I'm tapping the bowling ball to make it speed up. So to make an interaction diagram, the very first thing that I wanna do is I want to just start identifying the nouns in this situation. I want to identify what objects are there, what objects might be involved. So I'm talking about physical things. And I'm just going to make for each one of them, I'm just going to identify them and draw them in a circle. So of course we've got a bowling ball. So I'm just making a circle for the bowling ball. Uh, what other objects are involved if we're looking at like a paused moment in the video of me in the hallway with the bowling ball. So there's a floor. I'm just thinking about all the stuff that's there. I've got a mallet in my hand. Oh, and if I'm holding the mallet, then I'm there. So again, I'm just in red. I am just identifying all of the nouns that are there. There's a locker over there. Um, there's a principal standing in the hallway watching. Um, oh, there's an earth. Just one of them. There's earth. And so I'm just thinking about what are all the nouns? What are all the things that are there? that I could identify. And so um, let's maybe this is enough for now. Um, whatever else is involved, I don't remember anything else being there. So I'm going to quit identifying nouns for the moment. And what I'm going to do next, my next step, after I just make a circle with all of the physical objects in it, now I'm going to make, I'm switching colors. I'm using a black marker now where I'm just going to draw a line to connect any of these physical objects that are interacting with each other. So, for example, I know that the bowling ball and the floor are in contact with each other. They are pushing each other, and this is what we call a normal force. There is an interaction between the bowling ball and the floor where they are squishing each other. Uh, let's see, the bowling ball and the locker, they're not doing anything with each other. Uh, the bowling ball and the mallet are not touching right now. Um, oh, C-car is holding the mallet, so there's an interaction between those two. Uh, C-car is standing on the floor. So there's a normal force between C-car and the floor. Um, oh, we know that the earth and the bowling ball are interacting. That's what we would call a gravitational force. There's a gravitational force between the bowling ball and the earth. Um, oh, I can think about how the earth is pulling on, see car, earth is pulling on the mallet. Those are gravitational forces. And actually, you know, I put that there's a principal standing in the hallway, except what also is worth recognizing is that the principal standing in the hallway 
not really a part of the story, we should recognize that there's always more stuff that we could add. And something that we'll need to develop over time is building a sense of like how much stuff to put on this diagram is too much, how much is too little. Like if I didn't include the principle there, because the principle is not really a part of our story, then removing the principle doesn't make our story any worse. Leaving the principle in there doesn't make our story any better. And so we need to learn how to develop a sense of do I need to bother to include this thing in my interaction diagram? Um, the locker. Um, the locker wasn't really involved there. Uh, should I bother having the locker there? Well, maybe later on, if the bowling ball smashes into the locker, then at some future time, let's remember that these interaction diagrams are about a snapshot in time, like a moment in time. And so, Maybe at some other moment, the locker would be an interesting part of the story, but it's not right now. So there is an interaction diagram. Um, and I could make it a little bit more complete if I wanted to, like I could think about the gravitational force between the Earth and the locker and so on. But also, I want to think about like, what's the focus of my story here? And really, this whole experience was all about the bowling ball. So. The last thing that I want to do when I am making this interaction diagram is I want to uh, define what I'm going to call my system. And when I define my system, um, it's just the system is fancy talk for the object or objects whose motion I'm really interested in. And the focus of this story is really about the bowling ball so I'm using a different color now, um, and so I'm going to outline this in blue. I just made a dashed line, or a dashed circle, let's say, around the thing that I decided that I was interested in, which in this case is the bowling ball. So my bowling ball is my system, and so I just draw a little dotted line circle <clears throat> excuse me, around my bowling ball. And that's going to help me focus in on what am I really interested in, what do I really care about. And anything that's not going to interact with my system at all, ever, that's probably stuff that I could leave out of my system. So this is a complete enough interaction diagram. I say complete enough because we could always have more stuff in an interaction diagram if we really wanted to but we also need to learn how to limit ourselves in terms of what's important or what's not important. So I'm just copying this again for being tapped to speed up. So at rest on the floor, we have an interaction diagram and we can see on the interaction diagram for at rest on the floor that there are two lines that cross that system boundary, this gravitational force from the earth on the bowling ball and this normal force from the floor on the bowling ball. The bowling ball is interacting with the floor and the earth. And so I know that there are two forces and no others that I'm interested in right now. So this helps me identify what forces are there that are affecting this bowling ball, that are affecting whatever system I chose. Now, the second interaction diagram, being tapped to speed up, we should think about what's different, what's the same. Uh, so instead of starting from scratch, I know that there's still a bowling ball, I know that there's still a floor, there's still an earth, there's still a mallet, there's still me, there's still that locker. Although, well, it would be okay right now, I think, if I just took the locker off, because the locker is not really a part of this story, because you know, I'm really good, so I'm not going to smash that bowling ball into the locker. My skills are way too strong for that. So I could leave the locker off, and that's okay. So similarities, differences, we still have the same objects involved. So I've still got the same nouns in little red circles. Um, but what is different now 
is that the mallet that I'm holding is now pushing the bowling ball. So there is an interaction between the bowling ball and the mallet. And it's also worth noticing that this interaction diagram shows that I am not actually pushing the bowling ball. I'm pushing the mallet so that the mallet pushes the bowling ball. And now I can see that I've got three interactions. If I want to identify what forces, if my system is still the bowling ball, so I've still got my blue dotted circle around the bowling ball. Now I've got three, one gravitational, two normal, three mallet. I've got three forces acting on this bowling ball right now. And so the purpose of an interaction diagram is to think about what objects are interacting with what other objects, and then when I choose what's the stuff that I'm really interested in, what I'm calling my system, when I think about what is interacting with my system, then I can just count how many lines cross that system boundary. Uh, how many lines cross that blue dotted line is telling me how many interactions, how many forces there are that are affecting that object or that system, the bowling ball. So that's an interaction diagram.